actually, um, my first issue is with uh, your conclusion that you see Suge driving. You actually don't. And I think if the defense wanted to, they can raise an ID issue here because Suge needs to be identified as the driver of that red pickup truck. Uh, that can easily be done by way of a witness, but um, you don't see him driving this car on the video. Um, but I think the crux of the case turns on self-defense and the defense being able to um, show that all of his actions, and not just whether a reasonable person would act this way in response to this approach to, to, to him you know, at his window, but whether a reasonable person exactly in Shook's position, so somebody who's been attacked and shot at before and almost killed, twice at but least. there was no shots rang out here. So right. that's all in his but, background. But the defense can still bring in evidence other than, this is just one piece of evidence. And what I'm trying to say is that it's not conclusive. It, it can be used by the prosecution. It can be used by the defense. From a defense perspective, they're going to say that these people commonly walk around with a gun, that that was a gun. He was approached with a gun and therefore using a deadly weapon being the car. I mean, he had two choices. He could have driven forward and by these people and risked being, I'm talking from a defense perspective, and risk being shot at, okay? Or he could have driven over them, surprised them with the car and, and <laughs> killed them in response to him but almost being killed. First of all, can we back up even before he pulls up? On Earlier that day, he had already gotten into a confrontation with some of these guys. So what is he doing coming back to confront them again? That's my question number one. Apparently, he didn't, uh, Shook didn't like that this movie that they are making uh, portrays him in a negative light. Well, if you don't like how you're being portrayed, you do what every other American does, you sue. And that's what he should have done instead of showing up here like he was going to convince but, somebody but to you're, change something. You're, you're analyzing the whole case. What I'm trying to, to uh, I guess what, what I'm I'm uh, focusing on is the video and the evidence that this that, that the defense or the prosecution need to corroborate this with because by itself it's not conclusive the prosecution is gonna say and Mari tell me if you agree or not with with uh, with me because if you agree with me you disagree with her um, <laughs> uh, you know the the um, prosecution is gonna say Look at the way he's driving. He's driving volitionally. He knows exactly the decision he's made is to run these people over, hurt them, and kill them, which is enough for intent to commit murder. And then the prosecution is also going to go back and pull out another video from last year outside a Hollywood nightclub where him and Cat Williams get into a brawl with a group of people, and he gets in a white pickup truck, drives off, and people are screaming and saying, oh, my God, he's going to run us over. Uh, if that evidence ends up being admissible, I think that would be a prosecution's dream. <laughs> it would be a dream. I mean, I'm sure they're salivating over that but you know anyway uh, what, do you, what do you think is up with this video I don't I think I think that when it comes to video evidence people are so quick to say oh that's the smoking gun mm -hmm. that's gonna lead to the guilty verdict mm -hmm. but the problem we see time and time again with videos is the crux of the case is always what's just outside of the view of the camera and you know like in the Eric Garner case everything was captured on video yet still the grand jury failed to indict in that case and everyone was was saying but how it was all caught on video because it's the way you describe what exactly. happens in the video and the defense is going to get out there and they're going to say you can only see part of the confrontation you can't see exactly what's happening between Suge Knight and the people outside the car and they're going to say he was surrounded there was a gun pointed at him mm -hmm. he couldn't move forward because he would have been shot at and that's all he could do but the problem I think lies in okay when he first hits the first victim and he reverses out that that's understandable mm -hmm. if their claim is, you know, they pointed a gun at him, whatever. Mm -hmm. But then he could have just reversed out and easily taken that road down and mm -hmm. just left and gotten out and, of and the from way. a defense perspective he could have been shot at if he yeah, did that but gun, instead he goes directly into the line of fire and he goes forward and goes straight through and kills that second victim and i think that will be a difficult part for the defense to explain away. Mm -hmm. I think the first half of the video they can explain away. The second half is going to be more difficult. And you want to know why I think it's going to be more difficult? The fact that Terry Carter's family, the own, own the uh, victim's family, are the ones who wanted this video released. They encouraged yeah. this video to be released because they want to show people that their son was killed by a murderer. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think that uh, Suge's defense, and I don't know why he's now on his third defense attorney and what. I, I'm happy to address that. But uh, 
I think they're starting to get desperate because I just read this morning that they're now uh, want to use as a defense that uh, Suge is legally blind in his left eye due to glaucoma, which is resulting from his diabetes, and therefore he couldn't see as well. Why was he driving in the first place if he really can't see? This just and now he's wearing me. glasses as well. But you know what? Um, that that would just anything to make this more of an accident will allow Suge to walk away with hopefully something lesser than first degree murder, and and hopefully see the light of day at some point. He's a forty nine year old man. But with respect to the defense attorneys, he might go to number 50. I hope I'm number four or number 10. <laughs> but you know what? Uh, it's his constitutional right. He has a Sixth Amendment right to be represented by counsel, to have effective assistance of counsel. And I, I don't think we can speculate. Sometimes people hire lawyers because they disagree on their defense. Sometimes it's financial, although, although I don't think that that's the case with Chuck. But there's a variety of reasons why clients aren't happy with representation and move on to another lawyer. And I don't think we can speculate as to that having any bearing on his defense or and any 